Welcome back to another tactical fly fishing on the water tip. Uh, in my last two casting videos that I posted, I got lots and lots of questions or requests for me to do a video on a parallel kick cast. So the parallel kick cast is something that I talked about in Modern Nymphing Elevated at the beginning of the video and also I wrote about it in my book, but uh, a lot of people still have questions on it, so I'm going to try and answer a few more of those today. Um, why do I use the parallel kick cast? Really, it comes down to drift. So there's lots of places in a river where you've got a bankside seam where it's nice and slow, and then immediately on this knife edge, it goes from slow to fast in a matter of a couple inches. Or in this piece of water that we've been fishing here today, there's lots and lots of boulders creating pockets, and those pockets are really narrow. They're only, you know, a foot to a foot and a half wide, and if I don't get my fly right in the middle of it, then I don't even show it to the fish. And uh, or maybe it goes, I have one fly on a two fly rig that lands in the slow water, one fly over in the fast water. And that really is the whole reason that I use the parallel kick cast is getting my line and leader and my flies all parallel to the exact target lie that I'm trying to fish. So how do I make that happen? Really it's in the name. So uh, if I'm trying to fish this slow piece of seam on the far side of this run, I've got a pocket here, then fast water in this foam line, and then a slow piece of water over there. And I've already caught two fish out of it. And to fish that, normally most people would just make a cast across the river like this, kind of diagonally. The problem is though, that if you go six inches, take six inches here, then six inches there, and then six inches there across the whole river, every time you go six inches further, the current speed has changed drastically. There's lots of changes in velocity from bank to bank here. So if I make a diagonal cast across the river and I have a two fly rig on like I do right now, then my point fly lands a lot further across the river than my dropper does. And they are in separate speeds of current and they will fight each other during the drift until they come in line. And so that I'm just not going to get as good a drift as if I lined them up. So instead of making that cast parallel, I mean uh, diagonal to the water, instead of making that cast diagonal to the water like that, I'm going to make my back cast directly downstream and my forward cast directly upstream. And then to finish the cast, I'm gonna kick the rod across, kind of like a reach cast. If you are used to making reach casts to do aerial mends with dry fly fishing, the motion is similar. I'm gonna kick the rod across the river or reach it across so that my leader and flies can travel across the river because if I make a straight up and downstream cast from here then my flies land almost directly upstream of me but if I add a kick like that then they move three four five feet across the river and exactly where I want them to go so I make my back cast downstream my forward cast upstream I'll just false cast a few times to show you that. And then I kick it across the river and my cider is directly downstream of my flies and my flies land directly up and downstream from each other as well. So they are both in the same speed of current and getting good drift. Okay, let me move up and we'll hit this little pocket. And this is another good example. So I've got a, uh, an exposed boulder up here, fast water down the left side, slow water down the middle, and fast water down the right side again. I have to fit both of my flies in that pocket behind the rock. So I make a back cast directly downstream, forward cast directly upstream, and then I kick my rod across the river to get it over into that pocket. And there's a fish right away. took my point fly and I lined my cider up with my dropper and my dropper was lined up with my point fly. They were all in a row directly downstream of that pocket so they weren't fighting each other in the drift. And that's a nice brown trout. That's how you make that parallel kick cast. Remember that the other principles I talked about in the previous two casting videos still apply. So I gotta make an oval cast 
where the back cast drops under the forward cast like that. And I also have to make a wrist base cast. And then that reach movement is basically dropping the oval a quarter cast around downstream. So if I normally would stop up there, I reach straight across at the end of the cast and that lines everything up for me. Reach and I'm perpendicular to the flow with my rod instead of up there. So that's how you make that kick at the end of the parallel kick cast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tip today. And I hope that it clarifies some things about the parallel kick cast for you so you can go out there and try and make it on the river. It is an advanced cast. A lot of people have a hard time learning it. Even when I've, I've taught people on the river, it takes them a while to get it. And you may not get it the first day or two that you're, that you're practicing it. But set up a plate, like two plates in the back of your yard or something about the distance apart of your droppers and, and uh, your dropper and your point fly and play with it. See if you can hit both those plates or line up your leader in line with two plates or along the fence line or something like that. That's the goal. If you can get that leader parallel and you're both of your flies within that current seam, then you're going to have better drifts and catch more fish. So if you like this tip, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel, Tactical Fly Fisher. And while you're at it, come on over and visit tacticalflyfisher.com and we'll help you out with your fly tying and your fly fishing needs. Thanks for watching.